Welcome to Practical Software Defined Underwater Networks. Uh, this is a presentation meant to be a replacement for the live conference at Oceans 2020 Singapore. I am Shiraz and my co-presenters are Prasad and Chinmay. Here's a brief look at the bio of the presenters. Uh, Prasad uh, works for Subnero Singapore and has been in the field of underwater acoustics for very many years, and he may be familiar to some of you. And Chinmay also works for Subnero Singapore. He holds a master's degree from Chalmers University in Sweden in the field of engineering acoustics. And I am Shiraz Shahabuddin, and I also uh, been associated with NUS Singapore and Subnero Singapore uh, in the field of underwater acoustics. Some of you may know us and uh, some of uh, you may be familiar to us too. So today's topic is underwater networks, the practical aspects of it. So as you know, uh, the image that is in front of us is very similar to the very many that we usually encounter in underwater networks literature. And what we see here is a network, a heterogeneous underwater network, which involves many different types of nodes, uh, ranging from uh, satellites, which is not shown in this image, uh, UAVs, uh, AUVs, ships, uh, buoys, land stations, underwater hubs, divers, and other acoustic uh, nodes sitting in the water. And all these nodes are connected by very different types of uh, links. Uh, they may include optical links, they can be RF links for the terrestrial communications, there can be GSM links, which means our cellular network uh, between let's say land-based stations and the buoy on the surface of water if it's near enough to the uh, terrestrial uh, GSM network. And in some cases, it could be satellite links where it could be far out in the sea and there are no other options available for uh, electromagnetic communications uh, to the surface of the ocean. And some can be wired links uh, towards the coastal areas and so on. And today, uh, from a practical perspective, here we outline an illustrative underwater network uh, of this nature. And this is a network that uh, over the course of this tutorial, we will try to develop as an illustration of how do we do underwater networking in reality. Uh, so this is not a tutorial where we talk just theory. We're gonna walk you through with the software aspects of how to set up such a network. And we really map it to our earlier figures such as this uh, and see that this is technically really doable and feasible uh, with uh, software defined uh, under other networks. So what we see here are five nodes. The black nodes are supposed to be sitting towards the surface connected by wired connections to uh, perhaps a boat, a control uh, uh, unit in the boat. And the great nodes are sitting deeper in the water and they are not accessible via wired networks. Obviously they are in this particular example, we're going to be linked by acoustic uh, links to the surface uh, nodes as shown. And here we also have a sensor um, that is shown as linked to node two. And we will have some examples later on in the talk uh, given by Chinmay, uh, where you can see how uh, a sensor node can be accessed uh, via multi-hop network underwater. So today's presentation outline is as follows. And uh, I am right now doing the introduction. And following this, we'll have some talk on uh, two node point-to-point -point networks uh, where we cover uh, the physical layer and link layer aspects, as well as a brief look at three node networks where we will introduce the notion of medium access control or MAC. I will cover that as well. Followed by successive uh, sessions, uh, which will be multi-hop routing uh, taken by Prasad. There'll be a session on sensors and the internet by Chinmay. Localization is another topic covered by Prasad later on. And at the end, we'll conclude the tutorial. 
So a uh, very good way to start this tutorial, we felt that would be to watch a video put up by Prof. Mandar Chitre, who may be very familiar to many of you, uh, an excellent uh, short video he made as an introduction to you. We shall take a short look at that first. About 71% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. And about 97% of that water is in our oceans. Although the ocean plays a critical role in our daily lives, we know very little about it. To really understand our oceans, we need a way to sense and observe the numerous complex processes that drive the ocean environment, and to report the data collected back to our data centers. While cabled ocean observatories have been established in a few locations, they are too expensive to set up and maintain for large-scale data collection across the vast ocean. Over the last few decades, wireless communication technology has percolated every aspect of our lives, and we have come to take it for granted. Most wireless communication technology uses electromagnetic waves to communicate, and these waves are rapidly absorbed by water. Hence, they are ineffective for communication underwater, except at very short ranges or very low data rates. Optical communication technology is sometimes used in clear waters for short range communications or very high data rates, but most communication technology underwater is acoustic. The reason for this is that acoustic waves travel over long distances in the right conditions. Although many of these technologies can be used to establish point to point communications underwater today, most of them don't integrate very well with traditional networking technology that's available today. The UNIT project strives to develop technologies that allow you to build networks that extend underwater, be it via acoustic, optical, or even wireless. Some nodes in such networks may be above water, while other nodes might be underwater. In this video tutorial series, we will show you how to build underwater networks using UNIT Stack 3, an agent-based technology that has been developed as part of the UNIT project. Okay, so we are back to the presentation. So as you can see, that was a brief overview of uh, underwater networks uh, work by Professor and his group in Singapore. Okay, so where do we start? I mean, of course, uh, most of the underwater systems will start with what we know and call as underwater modems. They are the primary devices involved in setting up an underwater network. Now, this is by no means meant to be a, a complete uh, capture of what's available in the market. They're just random shots I picked up from the internet. Some of the standard uh, commercially available modems are shown, and uh, they use different proprietary uh, software technologies to operate them. And, and as you know, as a mo as, at, the, at the moment, we don't have uh, underwater software standard for communications, and most of us are using still very proprietary technologies. So in this context, um, it is rather hard um, to uh, talk about uh, doing underwater practical networks without having to pick and choose one or the other technologies for bond of a standard. And uh, along with the hardware modems, we also commonly encounter simulators and simulators are oftentimes used um, to develop protocols, to try them out in the uh, laboratory environment uh, to a level of maturity before we can take them out to sea and implement, uh, and implement them in the modems and then take them out to sea. So you may have encountered names like Sunset, Desert, um, Evalogix has an emulator or a simulator for their series of uh, modems. And then there is another one called Unit Stack, which has been developed in uh, Singapore University, uh, which has been quite useful to us personally and many of the researchers around the world. And along with simulation software, it, uh, it is important to mention that PC audio, that is using a laptop audio, can be a very good uh, means to try out many of the algorithms because 
ultimately uh, underwater uh, communications we do mostly using sound and PC audio uses sound, uh, except for the fact that they are at a different frequency, but most of the common uh, concepts, or rather most of the concepts involved in the communications underwater is directly applicable to PC audio and can be a great environment to test many of the systems uh, in the uh, lab environment using audio and a very realistic uh, assessment can be made. Let me briefly introduce you to UNISTEC. Like I said, we do not have a standard uh, set of protocols for underwater use, uh, nor there are any standard systems. So we, for, the, for be able to demonstrate something to you in a practical way, have chosen to utilize UNISTEC uh, as the software for this particular tutorial. And uh, I have provided some of the links here where you can access this uh, freely available uh, stack. Uh, and there are some online, excellent online video tutorials as well. And I would uh, very much would like you to download and set up uh, unit stack using this uh, hyperlink that is shown on this particular slide so that we are able to do some of the examples and the exercises that follows. I shall not pause here for the installation, but of course, since this is a video, you can do it at your convenience. Like I mentioned earlier, using PC sound card is a great way to uh, try out unit stack and uh, uh, developing underwater network software. So unit stack supports a PC audio based mode as well. Another important question that you'd have is, okay, we want to develop practical uh, software uh, for underwater networking. Now, what if I do have uh, another modem at hand? So how is it going to be useful for me if I were to now look at uh, how unit stack works? Is it applicable to me if I were using another hardware? Well, yes, uh, what we have is the concept of a modem driver uh, so that unit stack allows you to develop uh, a driver for any modem, and then that allows you to integrate unit stack with another modem uh, and use the concepts that we cover in the rest of the tutorial pretty seamlessly. And there is an excellent blog at this particular link, which tells you how exactly you can go about driving, uh, writing a modem driver. So I would say that the concepts cover here mostly ported to any modem. And uh, some of the features such as ranging or localization that we will discuss uh, that may require hardware level support may not be available in any given modem. So just keep that in mind, but most of the concepts will be applicable. So let's start with a two node network. Uh, in a two node network, uh, we deal with the physical layer and uh, the data link layer. Uh, we, uh, we do not have multi-hop in this particular scenario, so we don't have to talk about the higher layer concepts such as MAC, routing and network, uh, transport layer, which will be following soon after this. But at the same time, we do not want to go into theoretical aspects such as modulation uh, and so on. In this particular tutorial, our aim is to stick to practical demonstrations and uh, setting up networks in reality. So I hope that uh, you are able to catch up on some of these concepts of modulation and so on in uh, other freely and easily available material online. And uh, some of you are quite obviously already well versed in many of these concepts. So in physical layer, we have uh, primarily the look at uh, the modulation schemes used. Uh, you hear terms like OFDM or VFSK, VFH, VFSK, that is frequency hopping binary phase shift key. Uh, and different modems use different modulation schemes as the underlying physical layer technology. Then we have to look at uh, what is a duplexing scheme. Duplexing would mean uh, how do you send and receive? Is that in frequency domain different bands or is that in code domain different codes as in CDMA? or is that in time domain, uh, as in GDD, where you have a half duplex modem sending and first, and then switching on to receive mode to receive. So it's 
a duplexing in time, which is what many of the modems use and which is also what we would be using in the uh, examples to follow. And data link layer, which is about the physical layer, is involved in providing reliability via acknowledgements and retransmissions. Uh, as you know, it's a lossy network. You may or may not receive a packet that's being sent. And you need a layer on top of physical to look at uh, receptions and uh, resends in case the transmission is failed. And we also will have to deal with propagation delay because as you know, sound travels underwater fairly slowly compared to radio waves in air. And there are significant propagation delays involved and uh, the protocols have to factor that in. And we also have to deal with concepts such as link tuning and power control, uh, which simply means that the physical layer has very many parameters to tune to optimally transmit over a given acoustic link. And we need some way of either manually or automatically tuning these parameters. And the power control refers to the fact that depending on the range and other environmental conditions, you may need to increase or decrease the power of transmission. Uh, but again, like I said, the theoretical aspects, I just want to briefly mention this, but we'll not go into the theoretical aspects in this, in this tutorial. Now I want to now switch over to a uh, two node network demo. And I will, to take a short break, uh, stop this particular video here and I will continue in the next video with the demonstration.